MLB The Show hey has released its uh, cover yes, it for did. the 2023 video game. And uh, my first thought is, why is there not more? No, I mean, I, get, I don't want to say it's too late now, but it would kind of just be like a makeup at this point. Why has no one been like, hey, uh, Mike Trout has never been on the cover of MLB The Show? Doesn't want ever. to. Doesn't want to. Does does he even have a say in that? Uh, no, not really. But <sighs> I don't think that's something that players campaign for. Where it's like, no, hey, I no, I would no, like uh-uh. to be on the cover of MLB The Show, please. No, like, it's if he was the face of the league for so long. I mean, now he's not. I uh, I don't think he ever really definitively was. I mean, he was definitely in the in the running just because of how good he is, but. Uh, the fact that this video game has been out since what 2006 they picked up where MVP left off yeah MVP 05 was the last right so I'm going down the list here let's just go through who's been on the cover 2006 was David Ortiz great choice great choice 2007 David Wright 2008 Ryan Howard 2009 Dustin Pedroia great choice great choice 2009 uh, 2010 and 11 2010 and 11 was Joe Maurer? That doesn't make sense. He was both years? Really? That's what this says. Keep going. Keep going because I want to make a point here about this run in a second. 2012, Adrian Gonzalez. Great choice. Great choice. He was with the Red Sox at that point. Uh, 2013, Andrew McCutcheon, who went, went on to win the MVP that year. 14, Miguel Cabrera. 2015, Yasiel Puig. Okay. Hmm. 2016, Josh Donaldson, friend of the program. 2017, Ken Griffey Jr. 2018, Aaron Judge. Should have been Mookie Betts, I believe. Uh, 2019, Bryce Harper. 2020, Javi Baez. 2021, Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, Last year, Shohei Otani. Great choice. And this year, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Can I Your say point, something? Jay. Yes, please. Yeah. What you I'm so glad you read that list because what screams to me after reading that list is how much more naturally marketable the game is in the last 5 or 6 years than it was when they were deciding cover athletes for the for the sport uh in 06 07 through 2012. Like with all due respect, I'm not diminishing the quality of those players' careers, but we, they were fine choices at the time. But like the fact that we were, were talking about David Wright and Dustin Pedroia and Ryan Howard and back-to-back years of Joe Maurer, and it's like, and then the last couple of years, you said it's Shohei Otani and Bryce Harper and Fernando Tatis and Judge. It's just, yeah, and Aaron Judge. And it's it's just like... Um, the superstars of today's game, it, the, the sport's in a very lucky position from that perspective, I guess is my point, because the superstars and the up and coming emerging players are just so much more fundamentally exciting, I think, than they were at that point. And there's always an ebb and flow in the, with well, this stuff, but think, that that's what that screams to me. Think about this, Jay. Hey. <clears throat> there's more of an opportunity now than there has ever been for a, a payout of sorts off the field and like we've talked sure. about like the compensation for being the cover athlete there's nothing coming directly from mlb the show to this player but now he's got that hype right now he's got that that he can leverage in other sort of negotiations other sort of endorsements and so the marketability that you were concerned with or that you concerned yourself with as a young player 10 years ago 20 years ago when I was starting are things that were marketable to ownership groups. Uh, am I playing the game quote unquote the right way without the levels of flash that we see today, right? Because now you become somebody who's not making waves, does the right thing, keeps their head down, goes to work. Like we like that guy, that player sets an example for the younger guys. And what example was that? not making waves, doing the right thing. Well, who is that marketable to? Ownership groups. Now, 
if you don't cash in readily with the ownership group, that doesn't mean that you're not going to cash out in other avenues. So the potential there is not what it was back then. So for a guy like Jazz Chisholm Jr., the things that will come his way because of this because of this now are are things that wouldn't going to what wasn't going to happen 10 15 years ago if that makes sense so now yeah now you get to leverage that and and so being flashy without being the best player in the game that gets you on the list that gets you behind the red velvet rope and that's a different avenue that's a street that exists now that didn't exist before. So to your point about marketability, a lot of the names that you mentioned too are folks who have done a good job of marketing themselves or allowing themselves to be marketed in a way that does connect with fan bases of yesteryear, current as well. So again, because nope. they're willing to do that, that also matters. Yeah, no question. They're definitely better at marketing. There's there's a much higher awareness, whether that's a good or bad thing. Like that's for other people to. It's fine, whatever. I don't care about that part. What's interesting to me, and then we can move on, is uh, is just like the excitement level of the players that are available to be chosen for these covers is so much deeper now than it used to be. And I I loved watching David. I love David Wright, and I loved, mm -hmm. and and I I I just touted for Joe Maurer's future Hall of Fame candidacy, I think, at the end of la the last pod. Like, this is no disrespect, but, like, there is an electricity involved with Shohei Otani and Bryce Harper and Fernando Tatis and Aaron Judge that just did not exist with the... And those guys were all MVP candidates in their era, mm -hmm. right? Like, David Wright didn't win an MVP, but Joe Maurer did, Dustin Pedroia did, like, those... And David Wright well, could have. Th um, think about those two like, names, Jay. Captain, right? Captain David Wright, Joe Maurer without the C on his chest, captain in Minnesota. Head down, go to work, don't make noise for kind sure. of guys. For sure. And Ryan and you know, um and Ryan Howard got one or whatever, but like <clears throat> I just the the level of athleticism and, and electricity and excitement is just a lot higher with these superstars than they were at that time. And that's just the ebb and flow of the game. But I think that's that's the interesting part to me. Um other than the fact that it is jazz chisholm, which I think is its own separate thing. Yeah. yeah, and and we should talk about that because I think well Dallas plays a game like I, I admittedly I'm not like a big video game guy I'm gonna try to be uh, I know I've been saying that since 2017 but this is the year this is the year Dallas I swear I swear to you I swear um, well, yeah. the I, stop PlayStation stop, I gave shut up. the PlayStation I gave you fucking seven years ago is no longer I, no you got to get a new one why well, because that because I don't play with that one anymore nobody does what is it a PS4 yeah what I do I need a, a five? PS4 from the yeah you need a five. Okay. Well, I mean, you can. Cross, right, I'll get a PS5. You can, uh, yeah. Generation. There's no generational platforming. I don't think. Okay, I'll I'll get a I'll get a I'll get a PS5, and I'm gonna play a show. Yeah. Um, but I for whatever reason, I don't know. I guess I, I just appreciate what what you guys are talking about. Like what comes with being the guy that's on the cover of the premier MLB baseball game. Mm -hmm. Like I'm into that. I want. I'm, I I enjoy the discussion. So when I see that it's Jazz Chisholm. First reaction is, did not expect that. I love the idea, though. Like, I love that, you know, you don't have to be like every time it's like, all right, well, who's the face of baseball? Like, who is the 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 guy that we need to like if 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 you were to have, uh, you know, s send the face of baseball to to Letterman or Fallon or the Kimmel show, like who are we send and that's who should be on the cover of the game. Like you're not sending Jazz Chisholm, like he's not the face of well, baseball, you know but what? he's a very young and exciting player that gets a lot of engagement when when he does something exciting. Like the the engagement is is through the roof. So he's one of the guys that moves the needle. So then let's think about it through this lens. Why don't we take the time to give Major League Baseball maybe some credit here or MLB I the am. show at least some credit here and say, you know what? We've talked about them not marketing players, blah, 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 blah. And then it feels like as fans, at times we move the goalposts back when they try to take a different avenue and try to market marketable players. And maybe because they're not players with production of this superstar who isn't nearly as marketable, you start to say, why didn't you pick somebody better? Blah, 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 well, fuck, what do you want? 
We're trying uh, yeah. to find a happy I, medium here. What we have is Jazz Chisholm, who has kids in the fucking Caribbean, Euro stepping at their Little League games after they fucking yeah. jump ship. So MLB The Show said, you know what's moving the needle right now? You know where we could go? We could go the Jazz Chisholm route, and we could put him on display and his his flair for the game. And let's see what that does. And the reception? The reception's been great. I, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's been polarizing. It's I, there's I de- it's definitely the, been split. as far as the younger group like like yeah them sure. targeting that yeah overall reception definitely split and it's because of things that mm-hmm. I just mentioned not the production of a superstar maybe his antics or his flair is uh, processed and filtered differently through different fans you know some like it some don't that's going to be mm-hmm. polarizing so but either way what do they say you know no no press is the only bad press. Well, that's kind of that's kind of what's happening here is the conversation's happening, and that's what they want. Yes, and, I don't. And, sorry, Jerry, go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. No, I was just going to say I don't think I can't speak for I can't speak for anybody, but I don't think there's any question that MLB did and has identified Jazz Chisholm as a person that they wanted to get in on the ground floor with, and who was a priority to be that guy because of all the reasons that you guys have talked about and not that that was the reason for the decision. I have no idea what the reason for the decision for MLB the show was, but I think I I do think there's you know, talking about deserving credit, I do think some of that goes here because like the unfortunate thing here, I think it would have been better received if we would have gotten the full season of Jazz Chisholm that we were going to get had he not missed essentially July, August, and September with injury. Like he just never came back for that team last year. And at the time that he, he played 60 games and had 14 homers, 12 home, uh, sorry, 14 homers, 12 stolen bases and 860 OPS. Like he was having what looked to be a breakout season and maybe it still wouldn't have satisfied everybody, but I do think it would have looked even more prescient had jazz Chisholm not essentially missed the final three months of the season. And maybe the wheels were already in motion at that point. Who knows? The the conversation that I've seen coming out of Twitter is why was this not Julio Rodriguez? Um, so how I look at it like a video game cover, I would be looking way more at social media metrics. Who's the guy that moves the needle from an engagement standpoint? And then there's your there's your cover guy uh, versus I wouldn't be looking at wins above replacement and things of that nature like weighted runs created plus and then whoever leads in that like that's my that's my yeah. cover guy so but what if <clears throat> what i feel if like at times both? though that could be a lazy way to go and if you're thinking about building your product which i i gotta believe they're interested in at times you have to entertain what the long game could look like and I think so that's what they're doing with jazz chisholm though right like well, no, well, to Jared's point the about the social thing. media metrics, like like Julio's social media metrics, not what Jazz Chisholm's are, right? So, I don't know if that's true. I, I mean, I don't have that data in front of me, but I would, as, as someone who tweets highlights of every fucking team, I know Jazz does really well, but I know that Julio does too. And you're talking about one dude who is clearly a better baseball player than the other. Uh, that I would say, uh, especially after like the contract, like has a more like how many times have we seen guys come up and like, it's fun and exciting, but then they just fall off. But Julio Rodriguez is a guy that we know he's going to be here for a long time because he's being paid to be here for a long time. So, I mean, after going through that list of cover athletes for MLB, the show, there's not one guy who was a flash in the pan. They, it, besides maybe Yasiel Puig would be the one guy that you could point to where it's like, well, that didn't pan out. But every other guy, you're talking Hall of Fame. Yeah, you're all talking, stars. Uh, yeah, you're, it, they're all guys, like cornerstone guys. Mm-hmm. So I, I like the fact that you're taking a risk. You're rolling the dice here, and you're you're betting on Jazz being a uh a, a not just and not like a baseball player, but I mean like player in the sense of like he's he's a guy. Um. For quite well, some time, like, but... ultimately, it's not, you know, like, like who's on the cover doesn't necessarily sell the game per se, because no. y- your hardcores are going to they're, they're returning customers like me. It doesn't matter who who's on the cover. I'm buying the game. So that that is of no consequence. It's all about just hoping 
in retrospect, when we read this list five years from now, that it's it's lining up with the list that we just read today, right? That's what you're hoping as a brand, if you're MLB the show, is we'd like to hit. And we'd like I, we'd like to hit early. I for I, for me, it's less about selling video games and more about who MLB is is giving the rub to. Like who are they saying like we're marketing this guy? Yeah. And I I'm Julio not trying to take anything away from early. Jazz. I'm happy I'm yeah, I'm I'm happy that Jazz is on the cover. Like I, I, I saw it, I was like, fuck yeah, like this is not what I expected, but this is great because Major League Baseball is telling you like, hey, here's a guy that has fun playing baseball. Crazy, right? Like when he hits home runs, he celebrates and he does all this shit and he has viral moments. Like this is this is what we're trying to put in front of you is the product that that we hope the rest of the game can can look like someday. So I'm not disparaging the decision to make a jazz. What I am saying is that uh, a guy like Julio Rodriguez was probably the safer bet. Like if you're trying to put a guy on a pedestal that, again, I'm going to make a wrestling comparison. If you're going to make a guy your champion mm -hmm. and you think that he's going to be a future Hall of Famer, he's going to be a guy that's uh, a, a, a major name in your sport for the next 10 to 15 years, the safer bet was Julio Rodriguez. But that's not to say that he won't be on the cover next year. I mean, he's got plenty of time to be on the cover. You know, and then yeah, the especially... Go ahead, Jay. No, I was just going to say like... It and then there's also like the you know the devil's advocate point there where if if you know Julio is going to be a star and we're not worried about that and that's gonna that's gonna solve itself, well then maybe maybe we put Jazz on the cover, uh, that's, give this a little boost because this is a guy we believe in also whoever we means um, and and maybe that juices his his star a little bit and then we've got we've got two instead of one right well um, that's and that's that's where that's where I was saying. You take guys who don't have the metrics. So th this is saying Jazz Chisholm. This is a conversation that Jazz Chisholm's social media metrics are greater than Julio's. So the production is what we're talking about in that conversation. The production of Julio and Jazz are very different, right? So you'd be taking a bet sure. or taking a risk, per se, on the production side of things with Jazz, knowing that the social media metrics are what is balancing that out for you. On the Julio side of things, it would be knowing that the production is going to be there. So that would allow us to continue to build the social media metrics. So you can look at it as a roll of the dice, really one way or the other, and you can look at it as MLB, maybe, I don't want to say back burnering one of these, but maybe just sort of setting it to the side, knowing, hey, this is still going to be good here. But this is the route we're choosing to go first. Yeah, and I think it's a good. I think it's a good bet either way. Yeah, I'm happy with it. <clears throat> like I said, Julio Rodriguez is going to have plenty of opportunities to be on the cover of MLB The Show. Could be next year. Could be the next year. And he's. It could be the year after that or the year after that. Guess what? He's still going to be under thirty. <laughs> 